In the previous video of this series, you saw that a bitmap is a rectangular grid of cells called pixels. A bitmap image is also known as a raster image. There are three fundamental properties of a bitmap image. The number of pixels, which can be calculated by multiplying the width in pixels by the height in pixels. The resolution, which depends on the size of the pixels. The smaller the pixels, the greater the density of pixels. So the higher the resolution and the better the quality of the image. Resolution is measured in dots per inch. The colour depth, that's the number of bits used to encode the colour of each pixel. More bits per pixel means that more different colours can be used in the image if necessary. With 8 bits per pixel, a bitmap can have up to 2 to the power 8, that's 256 different colours. This 8-bit image looks pretty good, but you might have noticed some banding in the sky. In the previous video of this series, you also saw that we can calculate the amount of memory a bitmap needs by multiplying the number of pixels by the number of bits allocated to each pixel. For example, a bitmap measuring 960 by 640 pixels with a colour depth of 8 bits per pixel will take up 600 kilobytes of memory. The simplest type of bitmap is saved to secondary storage as a two-dimensional array of pixel data. Each and every pixel is given a number to encode its colour. When the colour of each and every pixel in an image is encoded separately, it's known as a true colour image. Of course, with true colour, lots of pixels in an image may well have exactly the same colour code. A small amount of metadata also needs to be saved for the benefit of any software that needs to interpret and display the image. This will include the width and height in pixels and the all-important colour depth. So the software knows where the information about one particular pixel begins and where it ends. When 24 bits are used to encode the colour of each pixel, there can be as many as 2 to the power 24, that's 16.7 million different colours. Notice that the banding in the sky is no longer visible in this 24-bit RGB image. The quality is much better. Describing the colour of each pixel with 24 bits depends on a fundamental principle of light. Namely, that you can make pretty much any colour you need, including white, by mixing together different amounts of the primary colours red, green and blue. Hence the term RGB. If you've ever seen a rainbow in the sky, then you've seen white light being split into a spectrum of different colours. In essence, the opposite effect. In fact, your computer screen relies on this principle, because it too is made up of pixels. When magnified, each screen pixel can be seen to consist of three tiny lights, one red, one green and one blue. These lights are controlled independently for each screen pixel to create the illusion of a single colour. In a 24-bit RGB bitmap, the amount of red, green and blue in each pixel are encoded separately. Each of these three colours is known as a channel. This means you can think of an RGB image as three separate bitmaps combined together. One with all the different intensities of red, one with all of the intensities of green, and one with all the blue. What you actually see is a combination of the three channels. Some graphics applications, such as Photoshop, will let you view the three channels that make up an image separately, or in different combinations. When saved as a file, Three separate values are stored for each pixel to encode the different amounts of red, green and blue. For each pixel, 8 bits are used to encode the amount of red, 8 bits are used to encode the amount of green, and 8 bits are used to encode the amount of blue. This means that for each pixel, the amount of red has a denary value between 0 and 255, as do the amounts of green and blue. With 8 bits per channel per pixel, the total number of possible colour combinations is 255 times 255 times 255, which is indeed 16.7 million colours. 
Sometimes when people talk about 8-bit colour, they actually mean 8 bits per channel, not 8 bits per pixel. This of course can lead to some confusion. 8 bits per channel is actually 24 bits per pixel. A wide range of application software, graphics packages, HTML and style sheets express colours using hexadecimal codes. A colour code is simply the red value followed by the green value followed by the blue value, each expressed as a two-digit hexadecimal number for compactness. As said before, when the red, green and blue values of each and every pixel is encoded individually, as they have been in this 24-bit RGB image, this is known as true colour. But a bitmap can also be saved, usually more efficiently, by using indexed colour instead of true colour. In this method, a colour table known as a palette is included in the image file. Each colour in the palette has an index number, and information about each pixel is simply a reference to one of the colours in this table. In this example, the palette has only 16 colours, which means that a maximum of only 4 bits is required to encode the colour of each pixel, instead of the 24 bits required for the equivalent true colour image. When an indexed colour image is saved, the palette does take up some space as well, it's part of the image file's metadata. But with larger images and higher resolutions, the size of the palette itself becomes insignificant. The beauty of indexed colour is that the palette only needs to contain the colours that are used in the image. This means you can get very good quality images with only 8 bits per pixel, that is, a maximum of 256 different colours. Most image editing applications will let you save an image as an indexed bitmap and will generate an optimal palette for you, containing only the colours from the image you're saving. This is called an adaptive palette. Another type of indexed colour palette includes only 216 web save colours. Although 8 bits allows for up to 256 different colours, only 216 of them are likely to look the same in any browser on most computer screens. Saving an image with a web safe palette will help to ensure consistency of appearance. However, when you take an image containing millions or even thousands of colours and resave it with a much smaller set of colours to choose from, you're bound to lose some of the colour information. The resaved image can't possibly look as good as the original. In an attempt to maintain the quality of the image, the image editing software can apply a process known as dithering. This is also called colour quantization. Dithering works by putting colours that are available next to each other, in a way that creates the illusion of colours that are not available. For example, suppose an image was using a palette without orange in it. To create the illusion of orange, red and yellow pixels can be matched like this. As long as the pixels are small enough, the human eye will be deceived. However, dithered images tend to have a grainy or speckled appearance when viewed up close. Resaving a 24-bit RGB true colour image as an indexed bitmap will usually make the image file smaller. So this is one method you can use to effectively compress a bitmap image file. Perhaps you want it to download more quickly from your web page, or you're just short of disk space. Resaving a bitmap with fewer colours is classified as lossy compression, because the image will lose some of its quality in the process, and this loss is irreversible. To summarise, True colour bitmap images encode the colour of each pixel separately. You can have 4-bit, 8-bit, 16-bit or 24-bit true colour images. 24-bit RGB bitmaps encode the saturation of red, green and blue channels separately. 24-bit RGB bitmaps use 8 bits per channel per pixel. That's 24 bits per pixel. Up to 16.7 million colours are available with 24-bit RGB. True colour images 
have relatively large file sizes. Indexed colour images use a colour table known as a palette. Data about each pixel is actually a reference to an entry in the palette. An adaptive palette contains only those colours needed by the image, and a web-safe palette contains colours that should always look the same. Dithering can be used to simulate unavailable colours. Indexed colour images have relatively small file sizes. In fact, saving a true colour image as an indexed colour image is a type of lossy compression.